for exchange in international. <laughs> Randolph, I was watching your fingers go in there. Your flying fingers, right? Yes, <laughs> And uh, when Brian and I were in the office, uh, Brian's on camera, folks. I'm Jim, and this is Randolph. I saw Randolph. I saw Brian. He was like sitting talking to Rodney, and he was moving his fingers like imitating you playing. Okay. <laughs> and, I, and I pointed at him and laughed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't seen him do that, but he was he was getting into it. His fingers were okay, pretending to be Randolph Carter fingers. You know? It was pretty cool. <laughs> so Randolph, this is a 1971 B3. Yes, sir. And as you have pointed out to me, it's a little, what would you say, rough around the edges? Uh, or... yeah, it's a little rough when it comes down to the furniture, but it's still a fine, very fine instrument. Uh, and it's hooked up, it's actually connected to one of my favorite, personal favorites, uh, 142 Leslie. So, man. It may not be that fine, but man, the way she sounds. It sounds great. Ooh. It's got some uh, uh, minor cosmetic issues, you know, right on the verge of maybe we should refinish it and make it look absolutely like brand new again, which we have the capable of doing. Look, maybe we should just leave it as is and discount it. Maybe, yeah. Well, I think that's what we should do. I totally concur. Yes, sir. Yeah, we haven't used that word in a long time, have <laughs> we? But yes, when sir. we first started using it, we used it a lot. Absolutely. Because <laughs> we were agreeing on a lot of stuff together, weren't we, Randolph? Yes, we're, still, we're still in agreement. We're still in agreement, that's right. So, um, yeah, 1971 B3, where the foam has been removed from the keyboards. That's kind of like what happens to every B3 that comes in here that has foam in it. And we say somewhere on our website, don't ever buy an organ that hasn't been certified foam free by somebody that knows what they're doing because if you get an organ that has the foam in the keyboards anywhere from 1964 and a half to the end 74 75 um, you could have big problems if not immediately later on you could have big big problems so what we do and you know Rand, if we decided this years ago once we understood the problem, mm -hmm. any organ that comes through our shop, you know, starting about 10 years ago, we were going to make sure we dealt with the issue. Absolutely. Yeah. Because in 10 years, 20 years from now, people are going to be calling and saying, hey, you sold me an organ, why didn't you deal with it when you could? And I didn't want you and Rodney and maybe Brian and the other young guys getting those calls. Right. That's when we decided we're going to deal with it appropriately, professionally, now. So our organs are all certified foam free. You know, one of the things, uh, Mr. Jim, it wasn't until I actually started working here that I re that I figured out, uh, well, found out, you know, with knowledge uh, of being around the shop that these organs actually had foam. You know, because to the novice or just someone who might have been playing the organ for so many years, they may not even know that it's foam in. The organs from a certain I year. didn't really know about it myself until maybe 20, 15 years ago or yeah. something like that. Yeah. Uh, and we kind of like started, re you know, the internet helped a lot because yes, people were sharing information on the subject. Mm -hmm. But uh, so I started asking other technicians, well, how do you deal with this? One guy said, he said, I could charge the customer $1,000 extra and I give them the option. Do they want the foam removed? and I would charge him $1,000 extra or, or, or just buy it for $1,000 cheaper. He, mm. he left it up to the customer to make the choice. Okay. 
And I was not comfortable with our doing that. Because at some point in the future, they might have forgotten that they were given that option. And anyway, you know, how you and I and, and the rest of us around here feel, we want it to be right 50 years from now, 100 years from now. We want to do the stuff that's necessary while it's in our shop. And it takes a lot of time to do it. And some people think some of our organs are expensive, but it's because we do all the stuff that's needed and to make it long lasting. The general philosophy being, take a 50 or 60 year old organ and make it ready for the next 50 or 60 years. And even at 120 years old, they're not gonna be as old as a Stradivarius violin. <laughs> if you had to ask somebody, what's the finest musical instrument in the world? A lot of people would say Stradivarius, Stradivarius violin. Now, in 120 years, people are gonna have two answers. <laughs> Hammond B3s and a Stradivarius violin. That's what we aim for. That's what we're shooting for, absolutely. Well, you were playing something. What, what you were playing there, was that in honor of your little baby girl? Uh, we're just freestyling. You know, freestyling? She's, she's here today. But <laughs> she's, she's always with you, right? Absolutely, yes, sir. Yeah. I loved it when you brought her into the shop. She's on one of our videos now. Yes, sir. We're waiting for that video to come out. <laughs> yeah. Maybe Brian can get a little close-up of that picture, too. She can, be in, she can be in the video even when she's not here. Well, Randolph, I'd like you, if you would please, to play a nice selection of songs and uh, even maybe a little bit more of what you were playing. Uh, let people see uh, what this organ can really do. Okay. I know when I sat down to play it, I found it to be something special. Mm -hmm. And the organs from the 70s, late 60s, to me, have that bright, crisp sound that I really enjoy. And right. There was something about this that had a little more punch to it, a little more power. Right. Uh, what was your impression when you sat down to play this? Um, well, when it comes down to the... I like to be somewhere in the middle. Okay. Somewhere in the middle of 60s, mid-60s. Okay. That's my personal. You know, where you get... Okay, so that points out that all of us have our own personal preference. Mm -hmm. I like the late 60s and 70s. Mm -hmm. And uh, they feel special to me. Mm -hmm. But when I sat down to play this one, I just loved the way it made me feel. Oh, yeah. It made me feel like I was in control of a powerful something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was, it's good. Santana, on most of their videos, that's what they had. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, with the engraved drawbars. Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, at any rate, enough talking for now. We'll have Randolph continue with his playing, and you can do some talking with your playing. Okay, no problem. And if you want to stop in the middle of a, to a tune and say a few words, <laughs> feel, feel free to do that too, Randolph. I will do. <laughs> Take it away, Randolph. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
thanks for watching our video, and thank you also for uh, helping keep the Hammond Tone Wheel B3 organ alive. We couldn't do all this work that we do here without you. And it would also help greatly if you could subscribe, like, uh, ask for notifications for when we have new videos. That would be a big help for us. So we thank you once again. I'm signing off for now, but we will be back.